Hey, welcome everyone. Welcome to a new edition of Death Nation, the, the show. It's already show number six or seven. I don't remember. Uh, and you notice this time we uh, started on time. I didn't have in any uh, streaming issues. Uh, well, I asked Edson just before to double check for me. Uh, and so, uh, as always, um, please let me know on the chat if everything works well. Um, if the stream is okay. And uh, yeah, today I don't have a special introduction. Uh, last week I was in Minecraft. Two weeks ago I was, I think, uh, with my swimming pool stuff and etc. So this time, a uh, regular start of the show. Um, but I had a really busy week, last two weeks, so I couldn't prepare anything funny for this moment. But don't worry, the show will be great. We have an awesome guest that I will introduce in a few moments. And uh, after that, I will do some live coding. It has been a while that I didn't do any live coding. And I will show you the two uh, things that I like the most lately, uh, Knative and, um, and Quarkus, okay? And of course, as usual, we will finish the show with playing the game. So three weeks, well, one month ago, we had Doom, then we had a platform game. And uh, last week we had Minecraft. And today, uh, I got another classic game integrated with Kubernetes, so I'm really happy about that. And um, yeah, let's see, everyone is there, okay. And as you know, uh, like every time I get a weird instrument to uh, introduce a show, uh, this time for the third week in a row, I again have a Brazilian instrument from uh, the Capoeira. I forgot to ask my wife how it's called. Uh, but it's a really simple one, and I will do the intro. It's really loud, okay? And now I will do the small jingle, and when we come back, we start with the interview. Okay, so fasten your seatbelt, let's start the show. There we go. Hey, hello, Vlad. How are you? Hello, everyone. Well, I'm doing actually pretty well. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, always a bit You're stressed welcome. when I start the show, but um, yeah, I'm really <laughs> happy to have you uh, on the show today. And, and I even managed to put the banner. You cannot see it, but we have a really nice banner with uh, written the interview and your name. Oh, by the way, oh, how you. do we pronounce your last name correctly? Michal Shah or... Is there a way how to pronounce your last name correctly? Are you there? Oh, I think we have a small uh, network. Oh, you're back. We had a yeah, network. <laughs> you're yeah, back. we, we had, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have to repeat it. Okay, so my first name is easy, it's Vlad. Uh, and yeah. my second, and uh, my family name is uh, made of three syllables, is Mihalcha. Mihalcha. Okay. Michal. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, not to, not with a Russian accent. It's Mihalcha. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, okay. Oh, yeah. Did I pronounce it with a Russian accent? <laughs> Mihalcha. <laughs> no, because you know that's my Dutch part. Uh, in 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 the Netherlands, we pronounce the H. We try to pronounce it. You know, uh, that's hmm? something weird for French people because you never pronounce the H. The H is yeah, always silent. Uh, but in, in Dutch, you always pronounce the, the, the ha really strongly. So that's a habit I'm getting. Anyway, it's uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Vlad, for people who don't know you, uh, could you introduce yourself in one minute or more? Uh, sure thing. Be, be, be free. Tell us everything. Okay, so, so uh, I'm, I'm a Java champion. I'm mostly known for blogging. More my, my blog is uh, also my name and dot com. And, uh, I've been, I've been working as a Hibernate developer ab advocate for some time. People also know me from uh, Stack Overflow, from GitHub. I have some uh, open source projects uh, there. And basically, and uh, also from Twitter, I'm probably m more active than I should be there. <laughs> And basically, yes, yes, uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Nowadays, I'm just independent. I'm doing trainings, consulting, just working on some courses. I want to 
I plan on writing a new book. Let's see how that uh, will be will oh, turn out perfect. in uh, 2021. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of uh, work to do, so I'm not looking forward to do it. <laughs> yes. yeah, I want to come back on the book on the book writing after uh, because I know it's a lot of work and you had a huge success, <laughs> but we will come back to that. Um, okay. so, uh, great, and, and and you are the 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 expert of everything related to persistence. That's correct. Yes, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's that what that's what people say. <laughs> that's people say that. Well, yeah. And I and when you mention Twitter, I love when you. Uh, well, I know it's on a friendly tone when you 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 react to Lucas Elder Spot posts and. Yeah, someone it. has to do that. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. It it, it, it has to be. It has to be done. <laughs> <laughs> It's popcorn times. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, the question that I asked to everyone that was uh, used to travel a lot, uh, mm -hmm. you were a developer advocate, and even now you, you still, you were supposed to travel to conferences. And mm -hmm. well, things change a bit uh, this year, as we all know. And mm -hmm. uh, how did you manage this uh, situation? Oh, well, actually, the. I was planning this year, I was planning to do less traveling, but actually not uh, that uh, much less traveling. <laughs> so I wanted to cut a little bit from uh, and just do like two or three probably conference and I didn't uh, go anywhere. <laughs> last time I traveled was in December, last December to, to Oslo. And uh, yes, actually I had to move everything to online like everybody did, exactly like we're doing it now. So instead of uh, going to a conference and presenting your content there, uh, you can uh, do the same online, probably to a much larger audience. So in a way, uh, there are also some benefits of uh, doing it online. So yes, I had to adapt. I did some training uh, online, which uh, in the previous uh, previous years I didn't even think of uh, doing it because I I would have, I would just do it at a conference or something like that. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah, and um, yeah, I don't know if it applies to you, but we uh, for people that used to travel a lot and that travel less, we had that feeling that we even worked more because we were. Well, mm -hmm. not stuck home, yeah, stuck home, but instead of waiting at the airport, uh, we were just working. So we had all the <laughs> we were working way more than before. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, probably that could happen, but I uh, I know that the, uh, the, you, there are developer advocates who uh, were doing like 50 or 70 uh, conferences. They were speaking at 70 events. Well, I, I was nowhere uh, near to that, so I was probably going like six times per e uh, per year. Even even so, for me, it was oh my god, this is <laughs> this is so exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I was not I, I was not really let's say uh, that I'm not sure how to call it. Uh, let's say that like like professional developer or professional conference speaker so yes i did some presentations but probably not as much as uh, josh long does or uh, nicola frankel or many other people are doing way way more or edson yanaga he told me like he did like he's on the chat he's on the chat yeah he, he, he did like 70 or something like that i don't, I don't think i did 70 in my life <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, and, and speaking about conferences, let me see if I can manage to do that. I, I was checking your blog. Uh, yeah, you should see that is the that is your blog. And yeah, I it's my blog. And I recognize this image. That was yeah. a J Prime in Sofia. It was. Yes, Correct. it was a J Prime. In, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we we met at this speaker dinner. <laughs> we met the first time there, and you put that yes. image because it was a crazy setup. A huge screen. It was the biggest screen I've ever seen in a in a conference. I think. Uh, I love the lighting. The the lightings awesome. were were oh, great. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's why I put the image because it it, it really looks. I, I think it's one of the best uh, conference uh, picture that I had that I've yeah, yeah. I've ever had. That the pictures were great quality and I really liked this one. It was uh, a panoramic one. Yeah. And the, the 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 it was also one of the one of my best talk that I have uh, I've ever done in my life. 
It was oh, I, for yeah. I don't know why, but the 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 more people are in the room, I, I yeah. in a way I get uh, more energy and I I feel like uh, I give better talks than you know a small crowd. I don't know why why is that. But yeah, for, yeah, but. I remember it, it was really crowded, uh, packed for all the talks, and I, it mm -hmm. gave me also a lot of energy. I also gave a really good talk there. I remember, and uh, yeah, it was a lot Pink of fun. So. But it was funny because I went on your blog and I said, "Oh yeah, I know that image." Oh, and I said, "That's funny." It's also the the yeah. first time we met. So uh, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. that was just exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, um, let's talk a bit about. Um, Hibernate, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm just curious, I, I, when was the first time you used Hibernate? When you tried it out for the first time? Yeah. The first time I used Hibernate, actually I didn't use Hibernate, I used N Hibernate. <laughs> So it was in two, yes, it's, it's very, uh, it was a very, very long time ago. It was in 2004, 2004, that's, uh, for uh, 16 years ago. So yeah. I was, uh, I was a student back then. Uh, I was, uh, and I was preparing my, uh, diploma thesis, you know, the project that you do at the end of your college. And, um, it was a project in .NET and, we wanted something to persist the data to the database. Uh, we we had something from uh, from .NET that we didn't like, and uh, actually I went uh, I, I I pursued this to to see how how things are going, and I, and I really liked it. And afterward, after I graduated, I got hired and I was working in Java. So I just uh, I said, oh, but uh, there's now now we have the real deal. We have the framework that inspired the other one that I used and I already know and liked. So I kept on using afterward, and after a while I realized that I I kind of know it, so I decided to blog about it, and then I noticed that people react well to it, so it just snowballed afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's funny. So, so I, I used Hibernate the first time in 2004, because yep, I was yep. a student, mm -hmm. and I had to do it for my own project thesis. <laughs> so <that's> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see. <laughs> I remember I learned it from a book from, I think, I don't remember, one of the early uh, writers about Hibernate. It's a Christian, book. Christian Boyer. Boyer, about uh, the, 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 the application that you could build was to manage your CD collection, I think. And uh, it was. Is that the KV at Empor, that one? K yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's 16 years ago. So well, wasn't Hibernate in action by Gavin and uh, Christian? Oh, I, because... I think it was this simple. Yeah, I think it was the. That was the uh, at the time. That was the book. The book. Yeah, no, it was yeah, the, the Bible. <laughs> it was the Bible exactly because uh, yeah, the there were there were not yet great bloggers or people that you can <laughs> could ask questions. The the book was really the the. the Almost the only reference, except the documentation, and uh, yeah. yeah. Back so, in the uh, now we can say back in the days, you know, back in the days yeah. we didn't even have Stack Overflow back then, so we had to just browse and go to some weird forums to find answers. <laughs> and and I remember it was like magic for me, Hibernate. To be honest, because we <laughs> learned at school uh, the old school way, you know, was uh, was writing. Uh, C -C -C. commands and mapping this stuff yourself and uh, and Hibernate was quite magic and I remember my first job uh, the year after I was working in a company as a consultant and I was working with someone who was a bit older mm -hmm. and who didn't hear anything uh, never he never heard about Hibernate and I showed him that and he could mm -hmm. not believe me uh, mm -hmm. He say no, that's black magic, uh, and he stick to his old school way of doing that. <laughs> it was funny because he didn't trust. Which him. was Cobol. <laughs> 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 that, that that shouldn't work. Let's go back to Cobol. <laughs> By the way, you you your last article is about Cobol. Yeah, well, actually, it's an interview with a friend of mine. Uh, I found it very interesting because I I always wanted to. To get more in, uh, more info about it because I kept on uh, reading some articles which uh, intrigued me. So because uh, because this friend of mine uh, works in the field, so I decided to, to to have an interview with him so he can uh, answer some questions which I found very. Uh, I, I I think they were very nice uh, to 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 get some answers to 
uh, for, for those. And so he answered, so I just uh, arranged it a little bit and created a, a blog post out of it. And I think yeah, it's, I, it, it was nice. <laughs> yeah, I read it. And, and the conclusion was more or less, well, Kobo is old, but uh, it's fast and yeah. it's going to stay there for a long time. Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't think it's going anywhere. It's been uh, people. People have been saying that Kobol is there like for 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 thirty years. <laughs> so, now nobody, now nobody believes it anymore. <laughs> exactly. Well, the same same will happen with Java. We heard Java is dead since I started working with Java. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Java is dead. <laughs> yeah. And also Hibernate. Like every every year, there is someone who who writes. Uh, hibernate, uh, just stop it. Uh, let's uh, kill Hibernate. Hibernate is dead. We shouldn't use it. Well, uh, yes. next year is is going to be <laughs> next year is the twenty. It, happy twenty years anniversary for Hibernate, and it, it's going uh, quite well. <laughs> going quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so, for someone that would start, if someone would start now with Hibernate, um, could you give him your top three tips uh, on how to start well? Uh, because mm. I don't know, it's it's really easy to start with Hibernate, but maybe it's too easy, and maybe there's mm. some stuff that you need to care of, and maybe yeah. you can share some of these tips that you have. Sure, sure, sure things. I think that one of uh, exactly like you you said it. It's uh, in a way it's too easy, and it gives the impression that uh, now this problem of database and everything that's related to the database, I can completely forget it because probably this tool is going to take care of everything I would want to know like for which one of the first thing is SQL now one one of the biggest problem is uh, not the tool itself that this applies to any tool is that whenever you have like this let's say Java developers or .NET developers they know everything about Java they know streams uh, they know patterns frameworks everything about it but when it comes to the database they will do a anything possible to avoid it so to, to avoid learning SQL and everything that's related to the database and if uh, and rely on frameworks and if uh, that doesn't work well you can blame the framework because uh, you and still don't uh, and still don't and just pick another framework but still not learning as so one of the first thing I, I want to one of the first advice just to not avoid it go straight into to it learn SQL uh, read the uh, read the database documentation because that's not meant for DBAs no it's meant for developers as well if you are using a database you have to read it it's very important just like with Java you have to yeah. if you want to if you use it you have to learn how to use it it's the same with the database and also learn how to properly design a schema because most likely you are going to map your application to the database, not the other way around, because the business revolves around the database. That's where the money is. How how money uh, is re that? How you can cap it's part of the business. So how, somehow you have to adapt your application to that. You cannot just uh, change the database anyway. Any uh, developers or any framework wants uh, or favors it. So that would be some of the, uh, there are just small things, but they're they're very very important. So. Just don't avoid the database, learn it well, and then learn also how to use Hibernate, how we have an extended uh, uh, documentation that was rewritten. It's a, In a way, it's uh, actually a little bit too much because it will take you quite a lot, but you don't have to do it uh, in a week. You, have, you can study it over one, two, three months, as long as it's necessary. Read some articles, maybe a book, I don't know, whatever, whichever, everyone learns differently, so whatever... Um, method is the best for everyone. Okay. And, okay. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And once you get used a bit about uh, using Arenate, you integrate it in your project, and then you want to, to, to tweak the performances. Uh, is there a golden rule, uh, or again, some tips that you can give, or it's, is it too related to the use cases, or maybe is there no, some there stuff that you can there, there are also, yes, there are also specific stuff, but usually when it one like the number one performance problem is people fetching too much data most of the time that's the biggest problem so if you have performance problem it's very very likely that you're fetching a lot of data either from a query that probably fetches way than you need or maybe too many queries uh, which then if you go down the route you will see that probably you have some mapping issues probably you have some query related or the methods that you called the way uh, in the way they were called generated those queries so yes it requires a little bit of expertise 
just as I, just as you said, it's very easy to start, but it requires a certain level of expertise to know what to use and especially what not to use. Because there are also, like with everything, there are also features which are nice for some use cases, but in general, you should avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, it requires a little bit of time. So, yes, I assembled on my blog. You can find those tips as well. I have, if you go to my blog, you'll find like more than 250 articles. So you'll find there a lot of tips about, no, no, those are only related to Hibernate. <laughs> so, okay. So you'll have a, <laughs> You will find a lot of tips there. Most of the time, you, do, you don't have to know everything. But uh, if you read the documentation and you get you, you get uh, a certain level of, uh, let's say, you, you get more confident uh, in what to use and what not to use, I think it's, it's not going to be uh, that. Uh, it's not going to be, you, you're not going to have a lot of problems. And even if you have, it's not like you cannot uh, change it or overcome any problem. It's very well documented. As well, yeah, and the community there is yeah. a huge yeah, community. Exactly. It's, it's probably yeah. in the Java word framework stuff. It's probably one of the biggest mm -hmm. community. I, I, I'm yeah. not sure, but I think it's. Uh, it uh, it is a very large community. You have for almost everything that you will uh, search on Google, you will probably find at least one answer on Stack Overflow. So whatever you have, whatever problem you have. There is already not. If it's not on Stack Overflow, someone blogged about it. Maybe multiple yeah. persons blogged about it. So it's it's hard not to find the answer to to whatever question or problem you have. So it's not uncharted territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you're still helping the community on Stack Overflow, for instance. Uh, yes, I actually I not as much as. Uh, now it, it depends on every everyone's standards. Not as much as I did before, uh, uh, which was compulsive. <laughs> 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 so yes, I still answer. So actually, I did uh, one. I answered one question yesterday because someone asked me to do it. So uh, probably every month I, I still do like four or five answers or something like that. Most of the answers are from the past, but I, I'm still uh, I'm still answering questions. Not just about Hibernate, Hibernate and uh, I also have a project and I also answer uh, for, for that project as well. And um, also questions about database stuff or even yeah. Spring or something like that. Whatever. Whatever. You mm -hmm. can answer, you answer it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I try. I try uh, when I was in the Keycloak team, uh, I try, mm -hmm. I started to, to reply on, uh, on Stack Overflow, but uh, yeah, it was hard to keep up, keep up, but I still, it's funny, one of my easiest answers is the one that gave me more points. Every time I go back on Stack Overflow, I see my counter with yeah, some yeah. more points because people voted up. I said, oh, but it was quite such an easy answer, but I'm glad that, that it helped people. And um, Yes, because yeah. it, it happens. The, the, more, the more general or the more straightforward the question, the more, uh, of course, it's going to, the more impact it will have, the more specific it is. The, it's in a niche. It's going to have fewer and fewer people yeah, uh, actually pumping yeah. into that process. It makes sense in a way. So yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, I also realized it. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the top most uh, voted dancers are just like uh, what's the difference between uh, Hibernate and Spring Data JPA? It, it, it's it, you would think that it's obvious, but people just <laughs> just love that, <laughs> love that answer. <laughs> Yeah, because they love to find uh, maybe uh, a simple answer to maybe a simple question, and uh, yeah. So. Yeah, people when when they you know we we have to, when you grow or let's say that you grow older in tech now you kind of assume that everybody knows everything that you know, but it's not it's not like that. Every year you have maybe hundreds of thousands of developers joining who don't know the things that maybe your colleagues already know. So you have to think that there are all. Uh, always there will be uh, beginners. beginners and probably yeah. even more than we are. Uh, the, the more time it passes, the more beginners are going to uh, join uh, uh, software development. That's that's yeah. why like 30 years ago, probably there were maybe in the whole world 100,000 developers or something like that. Nowadays, there are millions, tens of millions of developers. Yes. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, I think, as you said, I think a lot of people don't realize this. And one way 
for me to keeping this reality always aware, uh, well, I'm on Facebook. I know if, yeah. people, but on Facebook, there's the Java group, which is yeah. a huge group. And there everyone can ask questions. And when you see the amount of questions every day from beginners and mm -hmm. every day is more and more, then you realize, you say, Hey, but uh, yeah. You realize that mm -hmm. every day there are new developers arriving everywhere, and uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. So it's important. So for the audience, be aware of uh, don't don't be shy. Go on Stack Overflow and look for easy questions for you and just answer them. Uh, it will help a lot of people. So, exactly. Uh, you're you're going yeah. to even Stack Overflow has some uh, it has some uh, place there that like how how much was your impact how big was your, your your impact on the community how many people did you help or something like that which is really oh, nice that's, that's really <laughs> nice yeah 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 um okay uh, so you mentioned your blog and all your articles and so last week I had Nicolas Franquel uh, as guest and he blogs every week uh, um, mm -hmm. at a minimum and he keep he kept he keep this this written now for years, I think. And yeah, I think yeah. you're, it's more or less the same for you. So. Well, actually, uh, uh, yes, I also blog weekly. I try to blog every every week. Um, uh, Nicholas has been doing for uh, way longer than me. I know that I read one of his article, articles in 2010. So probably he, he's oh, yeah. been doing it for more than 10 years. I started in 2013, so I'm seven year Old. My blog is seven years old now. You're old, yeah. yeah. Wow. And it, it will go to blog, school. <laughs> do, you blog, do you block a day? Uh, how do you? Because, yeah, it's quite some work, I imagine, to write. Yes, it takes for stuff. for one article. It takes me at first. It took me a lot of time, uh, but the more you're doing, the easier it gets. But I cannot reduce it to less than four hours. So it takes me uh, at least four hours. Uh, a week to write one article and try to write one per uh, one per week because it's a good balance between uh, quantity and quality because I, I I would rather have I, I don't want to compromise the quality and also I don't want to just uh, overwhelm or spend all my time uh, blogging because there are other things that uh, I have to do uh, as well so I, I found that this is a good uh, compromise Having 50 articles per year, which is great because if you're, uh, if you think in the long term, it's good because oh. you are going to get, uh, good C, uh, C SEO out of it with just two or three articles. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. You have to have some content. Google loves when you're do, and Google loves when you're doing it r regularly, like every week. It has the algorithm, uh, favors, uh, people who, or, or sites who publish, uh, often. Oh, I didn't, I didn't knew that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, there are all sorts of tricks. Nicola, Nicola told me, we were talking in Vox Today exclusion. Uh, we, we were having a discussion and he, he told him about me that we we're blogging and he said, Oh yeah, Vlad, yeah, but Vlad uh, knows more about say, uh, SEO than me <laughs> because his blog is always, always on the first results. Well, I try to do, in a way, yes, I try to do, uh, as good as possible when it comes to that, because if I spend so much time writing, uh, yeah. I'd love to people to actually read them because otherwise, why, why, <laughs> why did I spend so much time in it? <laughs> yeah, well, but it's still impressive because yeah, every week you need to find the energy and the ideas as well. Because yeah. Well, I have, I have like draft articles with ideas. Like now I have like 100 articles in the draft queue. It will grow indefinitely. Yes. It, it grows. Uh, it, it, every year it grows more and more and I don't have time to <laughs> keep up with oh. it. <laughs> oh, it's like the so I have ideas. Of, it's like the yeah, backlog. It's like a backlog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which uh, never ends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's blogs on one side and there's also books. Well, at least one really famous book that you wrote and which is I, the best. I, I, um, I, I wrote only one book. <laughs> oh, well, it's just one book. Okay, awesome. And um, yeah, it's a bestseller on Amazon in the Java section or IT section. I don't know uh, which. Uh, yes, it is in the in the Java in the Java sex, uh, section also in for Hibernate and uh, Java persistence. Uh, it's uh, it scores well there. Uh, well, people people liked it. <laughs> I <like> it. <laughs> I actually invested quite a lot of time into into creating it because uh, by the time I started, 
I was blogging for two years, so I already had enough content to consider starting it. And even then, I also I spent another year to finish it. So it was it was quite a lot. And then I sp I also updated it from time to time. And then I invested also a lot of time into mark into marketing, into promoting it, because you cannot just uh, write a book, put it there, and then everybody is going to go crazy right. about it. Right. <laughs> No, you have to, well, there are people who actually did that, but those are, you know, those are so extremely good. <laughs> those are those books which are so rare that uh, most likely you have to do some marketing about it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not, my book is not that great. <laughs> I have to do marketing. <laughs> when you say marketing, well, was it mostly on... Um... On social network, uh, so Twitter was mainly Twitter or LinkedIn. Well, it's just it's related to my blog. So people actually, oh. it's it's not it's my blog. People know know me from articles or from my Stack Overflow answers, where they get to know me and then they get to know my book. Well, okay. for from Twitter as well, from my GitHub uh, projects, I built a small network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's been a, a small portion of internet. That's me. <laughs> yeah, so it's a virtuous. It's a virtuous loop, in fact. Uh, yeah. yeah, something like that. So it's just technical marketing. But like if you're a developer advocate, uh, you know the kind of the uh, stuff developer advocates are doing for a yeah. living. <laughs> <laughs> a huge amount of time of yeah for writing a book. I just wrote. I was a co-author and I just wrote a few chapters, but I remember mm -hmm. how much work it was. It was great. Um, and you mentioned in the beginning of the interview that you are planning to write maybe another book. Yes, I wonder, I have all the material that uh, I need to write another book. I just didn't have the time uh, to do it because I was busy doing uh, other stuff. The, you know, my, the first book is called High Performance Java Persistence. The next yeah. one is going to be called High Performance SQL. It's a continuation. It's on the same. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it continues the work from the the first book, but now it goes into database and it's going to cover. Uh, you know, it's going to cover like uh, SQL, but from the perspective which is uh, for many developers, it's uh, uncharted uh, territory. New features yeah. that are very useful and a uh, few people know about them, and uh, that's uh, what uh, it's going to be it's going to be about. And it's oh. good. it's going to supplement the book, the first book as well. That's really really cool. I um, yeah. So, but now you need to find the time, as you said, <laughs> to write it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I will have to do it uh, next uh, next year. Prob I'm not sure in which order. Probably, um, I will have the material to create a new video course for okay. uh, for this uh, uh, for this topic, and then uh, if I have the time, I'll also uh, write the book. It's so uh, it's the same topic but presented differently because a course a video course you you can create it you have to create it in a way and the book yeah. you have to create it in a different way because there are different products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds all awesome. I'm looking at the time. Yeah, we are already a bit above the time, but uh, I'm checking the the chat. Okay, no question there. Uh, yeah, from Aurélie, you want to comment? She said, only one book. It's awesome to write a book. Congrats. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I know people that write a lot of books. I, I don't know how. I don't know. Do. I don't know. I didn't, maybe they don't sleep or something. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. I, I, how, how do you do it? Insomnia? <laughs> Maybe they can manipulate time. Uh, they have powers that we don't have, and they can uh, extend. They go it back in time and they write another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey Vlad, um, it's the end of the interview. Uh, again, I would like you. I would like to thank you so much for uh, coming You're welcome. here. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was great, great talk. Uh, you get some tips, and again, I will share the blog with uh, people uh, on the chat. I need to. Do that right after also okay. your twitter account and yeah um enjoy the rest of the day again thank you good luck with uh well doing your new uh, course material on video and then after the book um thank you very much but, uh, and thanks for having me well, i love creating content as well so i think you love it as well <laughs> even more so it's uh yep. 
It's uh, actually it's uh, it's a very rewarding experience in a way to create it. That's rewarding. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so thank you very and, much for having me, and I hope to meet you at least virtually somewhere soon. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and uh, yes, I hope to meet you in person in uh, maybe next year. Let's hope that the pandemic uh, will. Maybe let's hope that we will see the end in the. Exactly. exactly. We'll see it ending eventually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you, Vlad. Bye thank bye. you. Bye bye. Hey, bye. Ooh. Let me switch back normal view. How do I do that? Um, <laughs> one. Two. two. Hey everyone, uh, two, two, two. okay, hey, let me see the time, yeah, we are still uh, on time, let me check the the, 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 the chat, everything seems alright, uh, is everything good with the, with the stream as well, I think so, I think, I think Edson came and made some changes uh, with the mic, is that correct, uh, I'm not sure, but, um, Anyway, I hope the sound is good enough. Um, the plan is now uh, to do some um, some live coding, and um, right after that we will play the game. Okay, so I do I have well I will put the news uh, jingle just but it's not really news it's live coding news. Okay, so there we go and I'm back in a few. Okay, and I'm already back. And uh, so I said my, to myself, yeah, it's been a long time uh, that I didn't do some um, live coding. I did that in the second show where I did some Java 15 live coding and people liked it. And um, so what I wanted to show you today are two things. Uh, let me just switch to, uh, da, 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 da. let me go to my, uh, this doesn't work. That's awesome. If oh yeah, there we go. I I'm, I'm watching my restream uh, my stream, so there's a bit of delay. That is going to drive me crazy. So let me go out of there. Um, I want to show you two things. First thing is um, a bit of Quarkus. So Quarkus is a, a, a Java stack to create your application, and it's really awesome. If you haven't tried it yet, please try it because. There's so much de developer joy when you use it. And, and the other project that I want to show you is um, Knative, the serviceless solution for uh, Kubernetes, create serviceless workloads. So what I want to try here is to just create a really simple uh, Quarkus app, make a container image of it, and uh, create then a serviceless service for it, okay? And we're going to try to do that live. So here, what I got here is, uh, that is VS Code with Quarkus uh, support, which works really great. And I just created a new project, okay? When you create a new project in Quarkus, uh, it creates this Maven structure for you, and it also generates a uh, REST endpoint, uh, listening on uh, the path hello and just returning hello, okay? And uh, what I can do now is uh, probably uh, to, to start my application here, and uh, I will do that by doing MVN Quarkus dev, and that will start my application in dev mode, okay? Dev mode, uh, just built my application, but still listen to any changes, okay? So my application is uh, running now, and if I open another uh, terminal, okay, and I do a curl localhost 8080 slash hello, it, whoop, yeah, I need to know how to write localhost, okay? That should be better, localhost, there we go. And that should return me hello, okay? Nothing special here, but a uh, nice thing is that if you start to do hello definition, okay? And I save that. If I do my curl again, uh, it's immediately updated, okay? I can even go a bit further. I can even add uh, a method to this. Let me add a new method to my class. Uh, listening on the path, uh, for instance, slash fr, and here I call this method bonjour. Okay, there we go. And uh, here I say, instead of hello, definition, I say bonjour, definition. Let me see, I'm a bit 
out of the screen and looking here. Okay, all good. Uh, there we go. And if I do a curl again now slash fr, I get bonjour definition. Okay, so this is just a really small part of what you can do with uh, Quarkus. That is just a live coding part where it makes it so easy to build your, uh, to develop your application in uh, local mode. Okay, so you can add classes, dependencies. You never need to uh, start again your application. We spoke about Hibernate just before with Vlad. Well, uh, you can add Hibernate, uh, create your mappings, everything. You never need to restart your app. Anyway, you can find great resources about Quarkus. We have a master course around that. Um, the thing is, I want to uh, create now a Docker image from this application and put it on my Docker Hub. So I will be able to deploy that in a container. Okay, so first thing I need to do is to build my app. So let me do an MV clean package. There we go. And, oh yeah, that will fill. That will fill because my test won't pass. Let me see, because it's expecting hello. And here I say hello definition, okay? Let me wait for a bit. But I can already tell you the test will fill. Awesome. So um, it's failing. So uh, there are two ways to, to fix that. I can fix the test or I can also think, hey, testing is doubting. And let me <laughs> delete the test. Okay. And if I do it again now, if I do a Maven clean package, I should be able to have my jar file. Okay. There we go. Remember, testing is doubting. No, I'm joking. You should test your code. Okay, I got my jar. And now with this jar, I can build my Docker image. And when you create a new um, a new um, project in Quarkus, it will also create here, look, a Docker uh, folder with different Docker files to make it easier for you to build a Docker image. And if you go here in the, docu uh, in the comments, you even have the command that you can almost copy paste and uh, to make your application run, okay? Uh, so let me paste this, and if there's one thing I need to change here is the username of the repo. I put here my, uh, I put here just my uh, Docker Hub username, cb2706, okay? And that will create a Docker image for me, and my Docker image is ready to be pushed to a, a registry, okay? So I could push that to, to Docker Hub or to, to Cray or to my private registry. Uh, for now, let me push it to, to Docker, okay? So I can just push this part here. That should be okay. And let me push that. There we go. Okay. And uh, hopefully my network is doing well. And I, yeah, awesome. I can just reuse some old layers that I have. Okay, let me drink some water and then we can uh, make a serverless version of this service. Okay, uh, let me see the chat. Hey, there we have Francois Martin. So hot reloading in Corcus is indeed awesome. Yeah, it's really awesome. Hey, Francois, it's you from this morning from Cover Crew, right? Awesome that you made it to the show. Um, okay, so uh, it has been pushed. So if I go to... Uh, to Docker app, we should be able to see my um, my uh, my container. We, we, maybe we can uh, double check that together. No, I'm late. I'm running late. Okay. So what I want now to do is to deploy that as a Knative service. Knative service will create a service, pick up my image, and deploy that in a cluster. I'm already here connected to a cluster. Again, I don't have time to make a whole course about Knative, but one nice thing is uh, that uh, Knative comes with um, a command line called KN. And with KN, I can do something like KN service create, and then I say live uh, show, something like that. And then I say image, and I point to my image that I just pushed, and it should be definition live GVM. And it's the latest, I think. I'm not sure. Let me see. And by doing this, uh, I should now create an image. So you can see here, creating li service live show in namespace Doom. <laughs> Doom. That reminds you something. Yeah. I will try to show you something fun if um, the, 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 <laughs> my container come to life. Okay. Uh, there we are. 
uh, service live show is now created. So this is available now for everyone. Uh, if I do a curl of uh, this slash uh, hello, okay. Uh, I got my service running. I can paste that in the chat. Let me go to the chat here. There we go. And everyone can go there. Okay, everyone can do a slash hello slash affair. That should just work. Um, let me go back here to my uh, uh, stuff. Okay, uh, and if I clear here, kubectl, I do get pods. I want to check my pods. And there we have the live show. It's running, okay. And uh, probably everyone is clicking now on the link. But if, if later, when no one will hit the link anymore, well, uh, what will happen is that my uh, pod will scale to zero because there's no traffic anymore. Okay? Again, I don't have time to show you everything. I just wanted, I managed in five minutes to create my Quarkus uh, app, uh, package it, and deploy it as a, uh, as a K native service. Uh, let me double check here on my uh, OBS. And let me open the terminal here. Um, what I want to do in my terminal here is deploy another service that I have already. Uh, case service create, and it's called the greeter image, okay? And um, what I did with this image uh, is just a simple app, but you can set a threshold of when it should start to scale to more than one pod, okay? And here I set it really low. So uh, this service again, you can uh, you can curl it. So let me curl it. Curl. Uh, okay, there we go. Hi, greeter. And if I do uh, uh, if I do a kubectl get pods, uh, I should have my greeter there as well. And um, what I'm going, going trying to do now? Let me uh, search. You remember last week? Uh, well, last month we played with. Um, we played with Doom, and every pod was uh, was uh, a monster. Okay, uh, I'm trying to do that just again today. Let me see. Is this working? Uh, I need to remove my VS Code. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, let me just move this a bit. There we go. And um, oh, I forgot to take my keyboard. And there, I'm going to do a new game. Okay. And um, to, 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 let me see. Let me go to the arena where my pods should be. And uh, and people, please all click the latest link that I've created for you. Uh, hopefully, it will create a lot of pods that will scale. So I've got here three pods. Okay, that's not interesting. I sure you can click click really hard to greeter. Oh, I didn't uh, copy paste the link the the link for you. Ah, if I didn't copy paste that. That won't work. Let me, oh, oh, come on. Uh, I lost my mouse. I'm not, I'm still not used to the, to the Mac, sorry. And uh, there we go. Let me paste, let me paste this. Okay. And anyway, uh, what I can do as well is I can uh, send some load on this. Okay. So I have no view here. I'm using a small tool called Hey. And hey, will send a lot of requests to my app. Uh, no, maybe not 15,000. Uh, let me send 50 requests. And that should create a lot of pods for me. Okay. And we should see all these pods. Oh, I'm getting attacked. So let me take some uh, distance there. And um, there we go. Let me do kubectl get pods. And uh, oh, I just have one pod running there. Hmm. Um, why is that? Let me, let's go, go crazy. Let's go for 500 pods. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure which one I'm applying. And what I want to see is a lot of pods getting created. Okay. So let me go and see there if it's working. Hmm. No, uh, my, my cluster is working too good. Okay. And because I was supposed here to have a lot of pods, I wanted to show you a lot of pods. I'm trying to kill some pods at the same time. Uh, I'm doing this. Da, 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 da. I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, let me just get. Oh, oh I know why it is this. Oh, oh, yeah, I know. One moment. Let me quickly do, do it. Uh, ta, 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 clear. And here I do a cane service uh, delete. 
I know what I did. I applied the one, the, the wrong service. Okay. Uh, there we go. And now I do a kubectl apply uh, slash f and uh, call service dot yaml. Okay. That should work. Okay. That should work. Now, if everyone can again um, spam with this URL, this time it should work. And this time I go back to 50. Okay. And uh, let me see here. We should see a lot of pods appearing. Look, look, they are arriving there because I'm sending a lot of requests there. Okay. Uh, so it's getting really busy there. Really, really busy. Uh, just for the fun, let's see how many pods there are there. Uh, so, oh, look, you see all the pods? <laughs> That's a lot of pods. Okay. Um, and again, I can hide myself because um, after one minute, when there will be any traffic, they will scale down and that will destroy the robots. Okay. Uh, anyway, that was my short intro. Now we are going to play the game. Um, let me keep this. Uh, I can keep this. Yeah, just for the fun. And um, the idea is today we are going to play another classic game. So let me see. Do you see the browser here? Let me remove the terminal. Okay. And um, the idea is to play another classic game today, which is called Space Invader. So you all know the game Space Invader. Okay. Well, there's something called uh, the Cube Invaders. Uh, it's a great project where every space invader is a pod, okay? And it's listening to the same uh, namespace where we created all these pods. And uh, if I go to my root here, and uh, let me open this, there we go, that should uh, start um, the game for me, okay? And, oh, look, and two, two, two. believe me or not, each of these pods are, uh, come on, it's stuck. <laughs> Maybe there are too many pods. Okay, anyway, let it run. But at the same time, um, to be able to create more pods, you are going to answer some trivia questions. And every time that you answer correctly, we did that a few, uh, um, a few, two weeks ago, that will create, create even more pods for me. Okay, so uh, let me, no, that's not the correct one here. Let, don't, uh, let me import the the questions because i forgot to do that oh yeah that's not good for me let me uh let me import questions i still have time should work uh let me do so as you can see i insert my questions using swagger <laughs> don't look here because otherwise you will see the answers uh the, the initial server error oh i was not able to import okay it's it's cube it's not an issue uh let me go to something called here, the game, which is my game. Let me go to my deployment. And because it's so easy with Kubernetes, I undeploy it and I deploy it again. You know, like the IT code, have you tried to stop and run it again? Well, this is exactly what I'm doing here. So let me refresh this. There we go. And this time I should be, should be able to uh, execute this. There we go. You see how easy it is with, with um, Kubernetes. I set the contest, I set it, I initiate it. And now uh, let me share uh, another link with you. And that is the link to the game. Okay, so please, if you can go to the game there, uh, you should be able to join the game. So let me see. And I will wait that some people, okay, five, I'm speaking Dutch now. Uh, five players, okay, six players. Uh, what is time? I'm almost done. Okay. Um, by the way, let me also, I'm just curious how it's going here there in my Doom phase there. Uh, do I still have some pods? Oh, we see all the pods disappeared almost. Okay, just two pods stay there that are my regular pods. The, the, the Canadian pods disappeared. Okay, are you ready? We have three questions. Okay, three easy questions. And if you answer correctly, uh, that will create a lot of pods for me. Let's go. Which one of these is a serviceless solution? Okay. And I don't have the propositions here in front of me, uh, but I think there's Keycloak, um, <laughs> Knative, Istio. You should be able to answer it correctly. Okay. And 
let me take a look here at my uh, pods because once I got my answers, I should see here in Doom a lot of pods getting created. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, time out. Okay, let me reveal the answer. Brennan is leading. Let me reveal the answer. And let me take a look here. Uh, Doom. Ooh. Looks like my pods did not get created. Why is that? Why is that? Live show? Hmm. Normally, <laughs> let me see. Uh, looks like I have a small bug. 66%. Uh, oh, why is it not working? Okay, let me try here to kill some pods. This game is also uh, failing. I, looks like that my... Um, Looks like that my cluster is having a hard time. Could be, okay? Anyway, uh, let's play the trivia game and we will see later because I'm already running late. Are you ready for the next question, okay? So, how many days until Christmas? <laughs> now you have to do the math, okay? Is that 66 days, 65 days, 67 days? Um, you make the math and you give me the right answer. Oh. And everyone is giving the right answer, almost. Let me see how much time there is. <sighs> okay. Mm. So people, uh, oh, people, <laughs> people answer the wrong, uh, correct, the wrong one. The, the correct one was, was uh, answer C, I think, 66. Okay. So anyway, that won't create any pot for me. Too bad. Uh, and let me see the last question. When was Space Invader created? Okay, and while you're answering, let me see if the game started again. Okay, and I'm here in the game. Why can I not manipulate my game? Oh, because I'm still in Doom. Yeah, sorry. I'm still in Doom, let me see. Oh, you know what? I was using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> uh, look what I'm doing here, I'm killing pods. And by the way, let me see if you answer the right answer here. Uh, yeah, more more than half the people who answer the great uh, question. And the winner uh, of the show is Guido3375 with uh, 36 points. And let me see, did any pods get created? No, that part failed. For the first time, something really failed um, for me in the game. I'm really sorry for that. Um, but I should have a lot of pods, but still I see a lot of pods here. So maybe something is happening. Let me see. If you go on one pod, I can see the logs of the pod. So it's a Quarkus app, uh, Quarkus demo. Yeah, I think it's working. I think I'm looking in the wrong. Oh yeah, it's working. Sorry, I was looking in deployment and that is pods. So we got here some pods created. And again, if I go to Doom, I should see these pods in Doom as well. So I did a crazy integration today with two different games. Uh, I can kill this boss. Let me try to kill this boss. There we go. Uh, let me see that. There we go. And whoa. And there you see. Uh, oh, 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 look. Oh, I think someone has created the script for me. Ah, that is smart. Uh, someone is creating a script that hit the other endpoint, probably, and that is that is creating thousands, well, not thousands, hundreds, hundreds of uh, stuff. And you even crashed my game. That is, that is awesome. I love when things go like this. Okay. Uh, anyway, congratulations to Guido three three seven five. Uh, it's already, sh it's already time for, um, yeah, for the next stream. So I have to, um, clear the stage for the next show. Uh, I'm already not in the middle. Yeah. Next week, let me go to big screen. Uh, next week, a great guest, Brandon from GitLab. So we will talk a bit about Git and everything related around Git and GitLab. Okay. It will be great. Again. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show, even if it was a bit crazy at the end. Thank you again for the one that creates so many pods. Uh, I will delete my cluster right after. Otherwise, my manager bear will not be happy when I will send him uh, the bill of my cloud. Okay? Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.